excited. I don't think I've ever felt so excited for the 4th of July as I do this year. And it's a, it's interesting how they say when it comes to Havdo, to our Jewish holidays, when you learn about the Yantif beforehand, you will experience the Yantif on a higher level. Excuse me. Now, 4th of July is not a yantif. We call it a chaga, is what we call non-Jewish holidays. It's not saying with a day hem, it's not in that sense, like we have a mission of Bajasara. It's certainly not a day like the 4th of July. It's not an Indian of, of Lifne a day him. We have Eidah. That's not what the 4th of July is. The term Chaga, I think, could be okay. It's almost like a Yom Adapagra. It is a day, I think, that has tremendous significance to us as Jews. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, the Simcha of the 4th of July is almost like I feel I should wear a strimal, except, you know, I don't wear a strimal on Hanukkah, you know. Maybe if I had a cult, you know, <laughs> I would wear a culpic for the Suda of, of the 4th of July. If you're a tish for the 4th of July. Because it's a, a day with so much tremendous significance that we have to have so much Akara Satayv to Kaddish Baruch for this tremendous, tremendous miracle that we call America. We have to understand, you know, some of the tzaddikim had negative what to say about America. They would say the trade in the Medina. They would say, and you have to understand what it, you know, Frank Sinatra sang a song, What is America to me? A name, a map, or a flag I see. It wasn't his song. I think it was actually a Jewish writer who wrote the song. A certain word, democracy. What is America to me? The house I live in. The Jerome Kern who wrote it? Maybe he wasn't Jewish, I don't know. I don't remember the rest of the words now. All races and religions, that's America to me. I don't know, I, I wish I knew the rest of the words. It's beautiful, you can find it on YouTube. There's a, a whole short subject where there's a Jewish boy running away from some bullies. And then Frank Sinatra sings this song in the 40s during the war. And uh, it's worthwhile to, to check out this this film. Uh, <coughs> Sorry about that. Before I make the videos to, to put it on air, airplane mode, but I, I'm, you know, when it, it, it comes, it's such a, a, a feeling. I don't have time to think, you know, and I just have to make these videos. There is this Indian of the trade in the Medina. I'm not going to deny that. When you study American history, there's a major difference between founding of America, which we celebrate on the 4th of July, and the subsequent history of America. It had its ups and downs. Glenn Beck often says that once America, he said that the founders, and, and Lincoln as well, sought to be on God's side. but. After that, and also before Lincoln's time, Jackson and others, even certainly, certainly before Lincoln, even 
the idea of manifest destiny was this idea that they were certain that God was on their side um, unconditionally. That's the mistake the Jewish people have made in history and make today. Yes, God has promised he would never abandon us, but still we, we are obligated to keep our side of the covenant. And the promise that God would not abandon us is a promise that there would remain a Sheiris a Plata, <laughs> excuse me, a remnant, a righteous remnant, who would be true to the word of God. Not that we could do whatever we want and still be in the covenant. We have to be covenant keepers. And so to America is a covenantal country in a sense. Washington, when he was inaugurated, said that there was no people in history who has to have more thanksgiving to God. I'm paraphrasing. He usually said to the power of providence. That has to be more. Have to have more gratitude than, to God than the American people. And he lived through it. He saw open miracles in his life, having horses shot from under him and hats and jackets shot right off of him, and yet he was not touched. This is a man that was chosen by God, that the power of the providence, Hashkocha Protis, was upon this man, George Washington. lead this nation. And the other founders, Jefferson, Franklin, and the many others, great patriots, when we become aware of this, that's what the miracle of America is. Eventually, there was this entropy and this deterioration just as Israel had in, in biblical times. This feeling that we're unconditionally covenanted and we don't have any responsibilities in this covenant. And forgetting about the covenant, abandoning the covenant, abandoning God. And that's, we've had ups and downs in American history and different factions. and. That's part of the beauty of America, that there's, there's a possibility to have these things um, in a peaceful way, so people can experiment, can look at different things, learn from <coughs> mistakes, <coughs> mistakes that <coughs> they wouldn't have been afforded to make anywhere but in America. <coughs> Spiritual experiments that took place in early America burned out zone in, in upstate New York with, must have been tremendous spiritual activity going on I don't mean just the activity of spiritual people but of spirits of, of powers and principalities in heaven that uh, that must have been something going on there in the Finger Lakes region, and all these different religious movements, some of which died out, and some of which continue to this day. It's a fascinating thing, fascinating. And that could only happen in America. You know, in, in, in Europe, as it was in ancient Israel, there was, there was this deterioration of things spiritual, there was the corruption, because of because the church and the state were one unit so, and, uh, not to say that there's a separation of religion and state there's a separate a wall of separation between church and state according to Jefferson meaning that we don't have one official religion but to have religious voices at the table who could, who could imagine that the founders didn't want that equally along with, not, with secular voices, of course. What is a 
America to me, the house I live in. Now, so what was the problem of America? The problem of America was not the founding, but the subsequent deterioration, resting on their laurels, the development of a culture, a negative culture. of this, we have to really hearken in a sense to a It's a pussy can lay the Ivets. Yaakov Emden was fighting against the Sabbatean movement. Later, there was the Frankist movement. He sought alliances with the church. Some of the most positive things about Christianity ever written by a traditional Jewish rabbi or by Rabbi Yaakov Enden. And this seeking of reconciliation for the express purpose of wiping out the threat of the Sabbatean cult. And there's one blogger who points out how eventually the Sabbatean and Frankist movements were able to infiltrate into society in a very nefarious way to the point where so many things have grown out of them that have, don't are not even aware of that because the, their devotions to their particular theologies were lost but the goals of them have been realized in a frightening way particularly in the past decade um, but the seeds of this have been being sown in the progressive movement and so forth for over 500 years, really. Um, you know, close to, close to 500 years, 400 years, three, three, 400 years, something. And could, could really trace back to Eirev also. Um, but that's not what America is. It, these forces have infiltrated particularly the judiciary. This is why Jefferson warned against the tyrannical, um, the tyrannical oligarchy of the judiciary. Um, that we see the popular culture and so forth, so much of which was formed by liberal so-called Jews. Um, and that's why really the Orthodox Jews have to understand and learn that our more natural allies are the church-going Christian. We have much more in common with the church-going Christian than we have with the vast majority of Jew people who call themselves Jews. Um, Yet these people created the popular culture that we have today. These so-called Jews, people who might be Jewish by birth but not by faith, and certainly not by practice, um, have utterly destroyed America through many aspects of popular culture in a nefarious way. That doesn't mean we can't still enjoy aspects of popular culture. We have to be aware, we have to be mindful of what we're engaging in. And we can have, we can make tikkunim in these in Yandam too. Um, but if you look at history, you know, I mean, the, the idealized idea of American culture so often was not real, but it was made by a Hollywood and by the television. And in the early days, well, the real early days pre-code, it was rooted in their roots. When the Hayes Code came out, um, they they almost you know they the put a stop to this, and so there was still this nefarious aspect to this. But Eventually, was overcome, and um, 
Jefferson, Ben Franklin. That's what we're celebrating. And we see that the left today has the utmost contempt for our founders. They say, oh, these were just old, old white men who owned slaves and wore powdered wigs and, and knickers. And they don't realize that everything we have is because of the sacrifice that these men made. And they wanted to get rid of slavery. It just, it wasn't time yet. There's certain things that take time. There's a time and a place, like we read in Ecclesiastes. And they, they had the goal of progressing past that. They were the real progressives. They, they, they were the real men and women of progress. They, they really brought progress to the world. And those who ironically call themselves today progressives, and have called themselves this for over 100 years, are really the regressives. They want to go back to King George, you know, and make themselves the King George. So we have to be aware and mindful of these truths. But at the same time, take the time to study, you know, read the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July. Understand it. Look it over.
devaluation of, and, and it's really linked to racism. It's, it's, you know, Planned Parenthood is essentially a lynching mob, but they're lynching the black babies in the womb and not letting them even grow up. And that's what it's really all about. If you learn about Marilyn Sanger and Woodrow Wilson, all of these founders of these horrible evil movements, and they clothe themselves in these lofty ideals, which I can understand, but that's not what it's about. That's not why they're pushing these ideas. So, America needs to go back to its founding principles. It might be going that way. We don't know. It's very difficult. There's so much baggage to remove. Um, so much garbage to throw away. Um, but this year, we have hope for restoration. Make America great again. Going back to the founding. Even though I don't agree with everything Donald Trump wants, I wasn't. It wasn't my first choice. Thank you. 